children, you are free to go to Children's Church if you so desire. Of course, you're welcome to stay here and listen to me. Today, actually it's tomorrow, we celebrate Memorial Day. And as I was thinking about this this week, about the men and the women who have given their lives for us in this nation and, and actually for all who have even served you can't imagine where we would be without that kind of dedication but it made me think this week about my uncle bill and actually before world war ii began he joined the army in the cavalry because he couldn't stay in closed places and he wanted to be outside he liked horses and about a month later they did away with the cavalry and they put him in a tank but he was sent overseas and, and he left behind his, his wife as many men and women left their spouses behind to, to go and to fight and his tank was hit in the Battle of the Bulge and he pulled a couple people out of the tank that was on fire and then he was captured and spent the rest of the war in a German POW camp finally freed by the Russians after the war and he came home a different man. And the reason he was different is because he had to rely that entire time on Jesus Christ and his relationship with him. Moses did the same thing. He left his brother Aaron in charge and he climbed up on the mountain, Mount Sinai, and he met with God for 40 days and 40 nights. And he came down a different man too. That would happen to any of us if we were in God's presence for that length of time, I think. And he came back carrying the Ten Commandments and what he found was his people were worshiping a golden calf that his brother Aaron had built. And he got this righteous indignation and he, he smashed the tablets of the law and it's one of the jokes people say is who was the worst sinner and it's Moses because he broke all the commandments at one time. Uh, but what he did is he smashed up the idol, he ground it into powder, he put it into water and he made the people drink it. And then he sent the Levites with swords out into the people and they killed 3,000 people to say that he was frustrated, to say that he was disappointed or angry, I think it's safe to say was an understatement. And that's where we are when we come to today's passage. It's Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. And, and, and the Lord asked Moses to come to the tent of meeting. If you'd stand when you find that as we read God's holy word because it's inspired, it's inerrant, it's infallible. So Moses says to the Lord, said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people. But if you have not let me know whom you will send with me, yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, and this is God speaking here, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us so that we are distinct, I and your people, from every other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken I will do, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. And Moses said, Please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you my name, 
the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. May God add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. Pray with me. Father, we do indeed thank you for this word and, and we pray that your Holy Spirit will descend upon us now. As you open our ears and our hearts and our minds, the Lord, we will meet you here today and be changed. We ask this in Christ's holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, Moses was in a, a really hard spot here. Uh, God was mad at his people, and it was well-deserved. But This was the people that Moses was leading, and God was considering to destroy them. Moses had spent the 40 days and 40 nights on the mount with God, and, and then God told him what the people were doing, and he said, go away. He dismissed him. He sent him away, and he said, I'm considering destroying these people. And, and Moses must have felt a little bit insecure in his own position. And, uh, and he talks to God, and I want to point out that when Moses is talking to God, it's like you and, you and I when we pray. That's how we talk to God. So I, I may get these terms mixed up here Moses is talking to God and so in a sense he is praying uh, and that leads us I think to the first lesson that this passage has to us and we must pray better to know God okay we must pray that God will allow us to know him better in his ways in order that we might serve him better look at verse 13 now therefore if I have found favor in your sight Please show me now your ways that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. While on the mountain, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, but he gave him a lot more than that. In fact, if you look in your Bibles, you find that the first place we receive the Ten Commandments is in Exodus chapter 20. But from Exodus 20 all the way through Exodus 31, God is giving more information to Moses. He talks about the altar. He talks about the tabernacle. He talks about the priest. And he tells, he tells Moses all these things in order that Moses might know God a little bit better and what God wants him to do. So he had been showing him his way already. But Moses wanted and he needed more. He needed to know God better. And it's sometimes we get, we get to the point in our lives, we, we've read through the Bible several times, we've been to years of Sunday school classes and church, and we get to thinking we know God about as well as we can. But we're so wrong. We need to always try to find out more about God. There was this huge rift between God and his people. And Moses, uh, he knew that is because of their constant sin. And this wasn't the first time the people had rebelled against God. It started long before that. And they come down to Mount Sinai and quickly they forget, you know. He goes up on the mountain. He's not gone but 40 days and 40 nights. And before that, they're going to Aaron and saying, build us an idol. And Aaron, for some reason, went along with the people, and he did it. But God had been showing Moses the ways. And I want you to think back to when you first started dating. So if you're younger, ones, thankfully, that probably hasn't happened yet. But one of the first things you want to know is about the person that you're thinking about dating or you're going to date. Isn't it true? You want to know the more information you can. You can talk for hours with them, and you want to know everything about them. And there's a reason for that, because if you want to please them, you need to know about them. You need to know if that girl that you're dating is allergic to animals 
before you bring her a puppy for Christmas. And if she turns out to be a member of PETA, you certainly don't want to take her down to Burns Steakhouse. Actually, I think if you found that out, I'd probably want to stop that relationship right there. <laughs> but I don't want to offend anybody, so I won't say that. Uh, But Moses knew, as we know in our heart, that information is critical in building a relationship. And so the more you know about God, the more you're going to see your own sin, and the more you're going to see his holiness, and the more you're going to repent, and the closer you're going to get to him. Paul knew that too. Paul prayed for the Ephesians that they would have a better knowledge of God. That's in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. And and Paul writes, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Moses is in this role as mediator. And uh, it wasn't easy because he wasn't perfect. Moses was a sinner just like us. Uh, And the people certainly needed a mediator at this time, especially because God was really, really mad at them. And so when he was still on the mountain and God had said to Moses, go away because I'm, that I might destroy this people, Moses intercedes for the people right then. And that's in Chapter 32, verse 10, uh, God said, Now therefore let me alone that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them in order that I may make a great nation out of you. Uh, Meeting's over, dismissed, leave here now. i got to figure out what I'm going to do with these people. Of course, God knows his plan already. I'm putting this in human language. But now... After Moses is back down, he's, he's, he's broke the, the, the two tablets. He's sent the people out to destroy 3,000 of the people. He's made them drink the water with the ground up gold cat, golden calf in it. And now he's in a tent of meeting. And God says to him, he says in verse 3, he says, uh, I'm not going to go with you to Canaan now. Because if I'm near these people... I might destroy them. Instead, he was going to send an angel with them, and and the people mourned when they heard that God was not going with them because they understood that without God's presence, they were going to be lost. This was a a broken relationship between God and his people. And God was very justified in turning his back on his people at this time. And again, Moses intercedes and he says, if, if I found any grace in your, in your eyes and if indeed you see me as your servant and you called me to lead these people, don't leave me into the dark about who you're going to send with us. Let me know more about what's going on. And Moses knew that he needed God. And don't we know that? I mean... We're going to be totally lost without God leading us. I don't know about you, but I've, I've tried many adventures in my life without God leading me, and every one of them turned out to be disastrous. And I think you know that too. We may not appreciate it all the time, but the fact is we are his followers, and that means that he is leading us. And God said... In verse 14, he says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Okay, it's not that that Moses changed God's mind. It's not that he somehow, God says, okay, I'll come up with another plan. I will go with you. But there's times in our lives that we need to know that we desperately need God. And he needs us to acknowledge that. He's doing that for our benefit And this is what Moses was doing. He's pleading. He said, we need you, God. It's not that your angels aren't powerful, but we need you to lead us. And have you ever been with someone and they're trying to talk you into something? 
and about halfway through the conversation you agree and it's like they didn't hear it and they keep continuing giving you more arguments why you should do this and it's almost like what Moses did here because he continues on in verses 15 and 16 God's already said okay I'm gonna go with you my presence will go with you and Moses says and he said to him if your presence will not go with me do not bring us up from here for how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight I and your people and listen to this is it not in your going with us so that we are distinct I and your people from every other people on the face of the earth you hear what Moses is saying what made these people different is because God was with them isn't that true for us what makes us different from the rest of the world we have the name of Christian does that do it is it the fact that we come to church on Sunday? Is it the fact that we listen to Christian radio? Is it the fact that, that we dress up real pretty for Sunday? Is that what makes us different than the world? Not at all. What makes us different is the fact that Christ is with us. That what makes us different. And that's what distinguishes us from the rest of the world. And, and Moses is saying this. And God says in, in verse 17, and the Lord said to Moses, this very thing you have spoken, I will do. For you have found favor in my sight and I know you by name. Do you think maybe Moses is being pretty bold here in the way he talks to God? Well, he is. Do you see God getting on to him for it? Not at all. God wants us to be bold when we talk to him. He doesn't want our flowery speech. He wants us to be honest. And when he wants us to ask for the things. God had the plan all along. He's going to go with Moses. He's going to go with the people. He's going to lead them into Canaan. And he does that. But I think he wants to show them what it's going to be like if I don't go. And they got the message. And they want him to go. And so God says, yes, I will go with you. And this brings us to Moses' second request. And we talk about boldness. This is probably the boldest request anybody has ever made. Uh, and this has come to our, I think, the second lesson we can learn. We must desire to see God's glory. I mean, really desire it. In verse 18, Moses said, please show me your glory. Now, hadn't Moses already seen many glorious acts of God? He saw the burning bush that didn't burn up. He saw all the plagues in Egypt. He saw the Red Sea part. He saw God bringing down manna from heaven to feed the people. He saw the water coming from the rock. All glory of God, glorious things. And then he saw the cloud lead them by day and he saw this tower of fire lead them by night. But he wanted more. All those things, all those things were manifestations of, of the divine glory. But what Moses wanted was to see the real thing. He wanted to see you, God. I want to see your face. Uh, he wanted to see the very being of God. And isn't this what we all desire? I mean, when you think about heaven, what is the number one thing it is in heaven? I mean, yeah, it sounds nice to not be in pain anymore. It's nice that I have no more tears or sorrow. But to be in the presence of God, no need for sun or moon, anything, because God will be our light. That is something that I hope all of you desire. And it's something that that drives people onward. It should be so strong that, that it helps us avoid the temptations when it comes. This is going to be the time when our hope becomes reality, when the veil's lifted and we actually see the glory of God. I've been at the bedside of many, many believers as they were taking the last breaths in this world. 
And as they realized that they were getting close to the moment when they would behold God's glory, it brought to them a peace that indeed passes all understanding. It brought them a hope and a joy as they realized that this life was about to come to an end and that wasn't a bad thing. They were going to behold the glory of God. Calvin says that Moses' motivation in making this request because he realized the gap between God and his people and he wanted to bridge that gap and he knew that if he could somehow behold God's glory that was going to help him to do that but we know that only Jesus could bridge that gap uh, the writer of Hebrews I think it's Paul anyway the writer of Hebrews he compares Jesus to Moses in uh, Hebrews 3 verses 5 and 6 he says now Moses was faithful in God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. Moses carried for a while the reflection of God's glory on his face, but it was phasing, it was fading. But Christ is God and he radiates the glory of God from within. And Moses and Elijah came to the Mount of Transfiguration when Christ displayed his glory to those three disciples. And Moses was there to see that too. That was the glory that only comes with God. Moses wasn't a perfect mediator. And yet what he was doing is preparing the way for Christ, who is the perfect mediator. Moses couldn't permanently bridge that gap, but Christ did when he died for our sins on the cross. And yet as God in his mercy and his grace, he answered Moses. And this is our, our third lesson we can get from this. We must be aware of God's goodness. In verse 19 and 20, God says, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I'll proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. God, prepared, God paraded his goodness before the face of Moses. How has God done that to you? How has God prayed as a goodness before your face? I, I was traveling to church this morning and I saw the, the blue of the sky and, and the, the green of the leaves of the trees in comparison. And, and occasionally there was a white cloud. And, and I just praise God for the beauty of his creation. And, and I think about uh, when I see a male cardinal and, and the redness of it. It doesn't even seem real sometimes. When I see the sun and the moon and the stars and an eagle flying overhead and, and I think of, of God's spirit hovering over the face of the earth even before the creation uh, this is God's glory he shows us this uh, I think about besides the creation I think about every meal I eat and every time I have a sip of water I think that's God's goodness to me uh, our homes our clothes especially these you know these are from God's grace these are something that he he gives us in his goodness and beyond that I I think I think that even in times of sadness uh, in, in lamentations and the people were in exile and they were suffering and they were mourning and they were moaning constantly because they had lost loved ones and and they were they were away from their homes and they were under the enemy's hand all the time and yet lamentations 3 22 and 23 listen to this it says the steadfast love of the lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning great is your faithfulness he gives us his word he gives us examples of like this he has given us the very faith that has brought us to salvation he has shown us his holiness that we might repent. 
He convicts us with his Holy Spirit. All of this is from the goodness of God. And yet we take so many things for granted. And we get used to them. And we go on every day complaining about the things we didn't get. And the things that we still want. Uh, Yet God gives us mercy even in that. We often miss what God has done for us. Life is just like a tapestry. Okay, It's like we're looking at it from our viewpoint. Have you ever seen a tapestry from behind? There's all these threads and it doesn't even make a pattern. And, and you're saying, why do people talk about a tapestry being beautiful? But you've got to go around to the front. And you've got to look at life and the things that happen to us from God's eyes. According to his plan. And then you can see the beauty of it. We don't know what his plans are. But we certainly know his goodness from our own experience. And we know that all that he does is good. And so when the bad times come, and the things happen that you don't want to happen, you can still see the beauty of God and his goodness. And you praise him for it. Moses asked to see God's glory. He wants to see him face to face. And God, in his goodness, protected Moses from that happening. Because uh, when God, who is holy and perfect, is seen by the unholy, by the sinful, it's a destructive fire that takes place. We can't do that. And if we did, we couldn't even comprehend it. When I was in my early 20s, proving my intelligence to the world, I looked at a an eclipse of the sun without any kind of protective lenses and thus burned the image of the sun under both of my eyes and it's a permanent damage and if I'm out in the sun too much I see these little brown images of the sun if we would look upon the glory of God now in our present state we'd be dead we'd be burned to a crisp And so God protects us from that and he shows us instead his goodness and he shows us examples of his glory instead. Now we walk in faith. Now we see God only through the eyes of faith and we see him as revealed to us by the glory. We are seeing reflections of his glory in in all the things. But the time will come, we will be with him and he'll take away of the veil and we will see him as he truly is. For this reason, because the time was not right, Moses had to be content with seeing that goodness pass before his face and understand that the word, the name he was given is Yahweh, which means I am who I am. His being that he never changes, that he always is, always will be. In verse 21 and 22, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed. That's the, that's the last lesson. We must live in the cleft of the rock who is Christ. God allowed Moses to come near him, but he protected him by putting him into the cleft. And he covered him with his hand and he allows us to come near him. He allows us who still remain sinners. We come to see him, but we only come to see him through Christ. And he hides us in that cleft. We were captives to sin, sin, slaves to our own fleshly desires. And we lived to sin. We lived to bring our own selves pleasure. And we were lost without hope. But God loves us even then. And he made us alive in Christ. And he hides us in the cleft of the rock. He sent Christ to die for us. So we come to him now knowing that we're sinners. We come to him now knowing that it's only by his grace and mercy and his goodness that he allows us to do that. We have no other way to stand before God except through Christ. And we do that hidden in Christ. Without Christ, we are nothing. 
we are like leaves blowing in the wind and, and we land on the ground and the only thing we're fit for is to be raked up and burned. But with Christ, we can come to God and we can serve God and we must stay in Christ. Jesus said in John 15, verses 5 and 6, He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Who are abides in me and I in him? He it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. Do you desire to know God better? I hope so. Do you desire that, that you might know him better, that you might serve him and please him? Do you have a strong desire within you to gaze upon God's glory? Are you aware of the goodness that he has shown in your life already? Are you in Christ, who's our rock? Some of you here are struggling this morning. And life has been hard to you. It's taken its hits upon you. But I want to encourage you. Because God will continue to show us his goodness. And he's going to continue to want you to know him better. And he's going to continue to hide us in his blessed son and to protect us. And the day will come for all of us who believe in Christ that he's going to show us his glory. Abide in Christ. Abide in Christ and watch what he does with your life. If you're here today and you're not a believer... None of the promises are for you, but that doesn't have to be. This very day, I pray that the Holy Spirit will open your heart and that you might come to him so that all these promises will be for you. Pray with me. Father, keep hiding us in Christ. Let us see the goodness you have already given to us. Let us not take them for granted. Let us know you better that we might serve you better. And Lord, keep us hopeful the day that we will see your glory. I ask this in Christ's holy name. Amen. After the service, the elders will be up front and they will pray with you. If, if you're not a believer and you want to come and, and get more information about how to come to Christ, please come and talk to them or talk to me. If you're sick, if you have any prayer requests, come and let their elders pray with you. May the Lord bless you, may he keep you, may his face shine upon you, both now and evermore as you go in his peace. Amen.